Welcome to Around the Weird. Here's your host, the museum curator of the strange and unusual, Mr. Nothing. Thank you, Mysterious Voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual and out-of-the-ordinary literature that I have found in my travels. Today, I want to talk about a graphic novel that I read. Uh, That's right, I am back on that graphic novel grind. Uh, And today's graphic novel um, or collection or omnibus uh, definitely fits that vibe of the weird and the strange. Uh, It is about uh, an unusual mask imbibed with uh, unspecified power. I am referring to The Mask, that classic uh, story that was adapted into a uh, a very good Jim Carrey movie and a very unusual Jamie Kennedy movie. Uh, And this was uh, written by um, John Arcudi with art by Doug Menke. I've heard of him before. Matt Webb, Keith Williams, Rich Perota. Chris Chaloner, Gregory Wright, Pat Brosseau, David Jackson, and Lois Buhalas. And this was published in 1991 or uh, in the early 90s. For those who don't know, the author of, of the main author of this series, uh, John Arcudi, uh, is a uh, comic book writer. Uh, uh, predominantly that's what he's done. Uh, he's known for writing the Mask series, but he was all, also known for writing Hellboy or Hellboy adjacent type uh, type comics, uh, as well as writing for both DC and Marvel. I think I've heard his name before. I've certainly heard of, um, of some of the artists before they've I've crossed uh, paths with their their work in other DC and Marvel uh, ventures in in the past, but I I don't think I I know too much about John Arcudi, um, but I do like his style. Um, I would say uh, as presented in uh, the hell uh, in, in 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 the Mask uh, comics, although I do have a number of issues with the story presented here that I can talk about in the analysis section. So without further ado, let's talk about this omnibus. I'll do a summary, a little bit of analysis, and we will move on from there. So this mask omnibus uh, actually contains three uh, sort of separate but connected stories. You have the mask, the mask returns, and the mask strikes back. Very, uh, you know, uh, unimaginative titles, but we work with what we're given. Uh, And so the mask begins with uh, a character named Stanley Ipkiss, who is down on his luck. Uh, Kind of an asshole, um, uh, not really... Uh, not really deserving of the beautiful girlfriend that he has um, and kind of feeling like he's owed a lot. And uh, at the start of the story, he acquires a a very fancy mask to give to his girlfriend, Catherine, who seems to collect those sorts of things. Uh, But during the middle of the night, uh, while he's at her place, uh, he, he somehow puts on the mask and begins terrorizing the town that he's in. Uh, doing anything from just being a general nuisance to straight up killing people and getting into fights with the police. They shoot him several times, but it's shown that having the mask on makes you invulnerable. Uh, And eventually, Catherine uh, sort of puts two and two together and figures out that Stanley's doing all of this, Uh, although the police refer to him as the big head killer. Uh, but and so uh, she uh, goes to his place, and when he when he goes there and takes off the mask, she shoots him dead, which is pretty uh, pretty extreme. Uh, and we see that she's put on the mask at least once uh, at that point. From there, the story focuses on Lieutenant Kellaway, uh, a police officer who does not like working within the uh, the realm of the law or the police procedures. Uh, he he's short tempered, much like Stanley, uh, and he's constantly fighting with the DA, who is it sh- it's shown that the DA is in the pocket of the mob, which uh, Kellaway is trying to work to bring down at this point. Uh, Catherine actually brings Kellaway the mask. She says, you know, don't wear it. It's, it's dangerous. He doesn't really believe her. Uh, and while he's driving home uh, one day, uh, he puts on the mask and starts attacking all the criminals that he couldn't put away before. Uh, and this, this manages to help him take down the mob somewhat, uh, although it puts him into conflict with a, a big goon guy named Walter who takes pleasure in fighting the mask. 
uh, and it also um, puts him into conflict with the police. Uh, and w once he realizes what the mask is doing to him, he takes it off and uh, decides to bury it in his basement. And that's where uh, the mask returns. From there, it jumps into the mask returns, uh, where uh, some mob mobsters believe that Big Head and Kellaway are connected in some way, so they go to his house to gun him down. He manages to get down to his basement, but he's gunned down in the process uh, and ends up in a coma. The mobsters take the mask, and one of the, the lowly sort of driver, driver mobsters uh, uh, decides to put on the mask, which uh, uh, causes him to turn into the big head and uh, enact his power fantasy since he's just a lowly mobster at this point. Uh, and he also uh, start, straight up starts a mob war at that point. Meanwhile, Catherine starts to realize that the mask is still at play and she seduces the this lowly mobster who's wearing the mask and manages to get him to take it off before she kills him and runs away with the mask meanwhile catherine decides that she's going to put on a mask in order to stop this extreme violence that's going on in her community and she begins to feel like she's losing control but she seems to have more control than stanley or kellaway or even that lowly mobster um, but despite knowing this, like she still comes into conflict with Walter, who seems to be purposely seeking out uh, the mask as, as a means to fight or even take the mask uh, by force. Ultimately, Catherine realizes she can't possibly defeat Walter, so she takes off the mask and tries to give it to him. But uh, me meanwhile, like Kellaway wakes up from his coma, realizes what's going on, and drives down to the docks where they're fighting, and straight up drives his car into Walter, uh, who is presumed missing at this point, and the mask goes uh, missing as well. And that's where uh, the mask returns ends. Th this leads into the mask strikes back, where a bunch of anarchist youths are hanging down by the docks and one of them finds the mask. This begins a, a sort of like uh, an array of different people wearing the mask where they, they it furthers their anarchist goals or they pretend to be a rock star or it sends them on a weird drug trip or they even uh, pretend that they're an actual superhero and they, they all sort of have fights with Walter and none of them are strong enough to defeat Walter. And uh, at the same time, Catherine and uh, Kellaway aren't really part of the story, but they are, and they're they're arguing about what to do about the mask, and it it they, it, they, it honestly feels like you could cut their cut that aspect of the story and not lose anything, uh, and ultimately um, uh, all the youths lose the fight to Walter. He manages to grab the mask and put it on, but nothing happens. Uh, it seems that he's either immune or he's too violent for the mask, and it's not going to do much to him. And the, the story just kind of ends with him walking away and that's the end of the, the original at least mask saga in terms of analysis there's really only like one main idea at the heart of of the mask there's not a whole lot of substance to this story uh, i do happen to like the um the the the, the art here although it's not as um i'd say like imaginative as as other comics that i read it really just feels loud and there's a lot on each page uh which is, is gets kind of annoying um as you go along uh but one idea that uh arcudi is really working with here is w like the idea of what power does the mask have like what what does the mask do and and where where do, sort of where does that power come from uh, and I think there's really two answers to that question. Uh, one of them is that uh, the, the power of the mask is that of amplifying personality. It's taking ex already existing behavioral and personality traits and, and elevating them to one million and, and making the characters worse for it. Uh, you see that with Ipkiss, who is, is sort of down on his luck, down on his luck, kind of an incel, kind of believes the world is owed to him. And when he gets the mask, he, he goes forth and, and starts hurting those who have wronged him uh and enacting his his bizarre like uh, uh desire to be on top of the world uh you also see that with kellaway who believes that he is um that he like the the law is not enough and he has to defeat criminals another way and he uses the mask to pretty much enact all of that uh none of these two people are really good and it just it sort of highlights their bad aspects to them anything it might be it might be just enhancing your shadow self which is an idea that uh, uh, uh carl jung developed uh noted psychologist carl jung 
Um, and you also see that with the, the, the mobster driver who Catherine later seduces. Um, you know, he, him being a lowly driver, like he, get, he gets in, to enact his mobster power fantasies on a, on a great level there. Um, and you might even say that Catherine, once she wears the mask, like she doesn't really have a lot of powerful aspirations or anything like that. So the mask doesn't do anything for her. Um, which leads me to my next point is may, maybe the mask, instead of amplifying your personality, the mask more along the lines, just, uh, like it, it just sends you, uh, on a drive towards violence. Maybe that bloodlust that already exists underneath, it sends you, uh, uh, further down that road because Catherine kind of realizes that maybe she doesn't have any inherent, like power power fantasies but the mask still makes her feel aggressive and she comes to realize that as she's wearing it like what is this making me doing that also happens to to Kellaway. and when he realizes that he's hurting his police friends he's like what am i doing here i don't i, I shouldn't be doing this the, the mask is is forcing me down this path um and it, i believe the comic straight up says that at one point where you have the anarchist people discussing what the mask does, and and it says, does it do this or does it do that? And um, you don't you don't really get a real answer. It just seems like uh, a throwaway line of of like what the mask could possibly do. And I get that keeping it a mystery allows them to do more with the idea of the mask. But I feel like it ha this is unfulfilled potential because this could be a great discussion of the uh, of the uh, sort of sub. Uh, some like the human desires deep down like what we truly desire versus what we say we desire like ipkiss just wants a break but maybe ipkiss wants more than that or this could just be activating the the potential for violence that we all have and it, it doesn't really say that like the closest you ever get to an answer is with walter the the big monster goon guy uh who seems to love fighting the mask uh and when he puts on the mask nothing happens to him and the there's a lot that you could explain with that that the comic doesn't seem too particularly interested in, in trying to explain. Uh, the closest you ever get to a real explanation for anything is uh, a dream that Catherine has where uh, like, like it's about the creation of the mask or something like that. Again, the comic doesn't really explain what that means. I think it's just uh, it's just a, an effort for the writer to say, here's something. I don't feel really feel like explaining this. I, I'm just, I'm more interested in doing the violence aspect of it. And so, I don't know. Uh, it, it just feels like this is all like surface level, nothing to it, uh, just eye candy kind of comic, which is though not not my favorite, especially when you, when you have the whole array of different types of comics that are out there that um, manage to tell this same type of story, but uh, manages to include an actual message or like emotion behind it. And then related to that is the problem that mostly this is just violence for the sake of, of violence. Uh, it's just the mask doing crazy and zany and wild and violent things. And we're all supposed to go ooh and ah and be excited about that. Which I, I get it's like it's it's supposed to be funny. It's supposed to be violent. But just having it be funny and violent, it doesn't really tell me anything. It, it's, it's just a story. It's just uh, art on a piece of paper at that point, and there's no there's no reason for me to care about it. Uh, compare and contrast to Vengeance of Bane, which was extremely violent, but that violence had a message behind it. Like ba uh, like Bane was violent because he believed that Gotham belonged to him, and he was prepared to kill Batman and do it. And then you see that big old fight between Azrael and uh, and Bane at the end, and Azrael was prepared to kill Bane, whereas Batman would never do that because he. He saw uh, Gotham as his territory as well, uh, and you see, uh, you're allowed to explore like the nature of superheroing and uh, the idea of vengeance and, and revenge uh, with, with Bane, and so it's it's not simply violence for the sake of violence, and it's amplified, and uh, it, there's an even more reason to enjoy it, enjoy it. Whereas here, you don't see any of that. Mostly, you just see vague commentary about superheroes. Or, or justice or whatever like that, and th there's nothing else to back it up. Uh, it really seems like the author didn't really have um, an understanding of what he was trying to say as he wrote this. 
anyway, those are my thoughts on the uh, the mask omnibus um, uh, for the mask, the mask returns, and the mask strikes back. Uh, I did like some aspects of it, but it was not enough for me to recommend it to anyone, which is unfortunate because I really enjoyed the movie. Uh, uh, not not the not Son of the Mask, of course, that's weird. But the Jim Carrey uh, version is definitely a childhood favorite of mine that's continued through the years. And it's weird that they weren't able to capture the same magic with the, the comic book. But I guess that's just an example of, um, of how a movie can improve a comic um, and sometimes adaptations are better than the original source material, at least in my opinion. If you read this before, you simply want to comment on something I said here, do so below. Let's have a discussion about the mask. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so that more people can find out about this if they don't already know. And until then, I wish you the best of luck in your weird and masky travels. Farewell.